Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to fit the Van Gennuken equation of the water retention curve using Microsoft Excel. You can use this procedure to many other types of nonlinear equations. It's a, a simplification of a nonlinear regression procedure and you can use it as a quick and dirty solution if you just need to fit data but you're not very worried about significance and other issues with parameters. Uh, it's not recommended overall, it, it, it's, it's recommended that you have a statistical analysis software or a programming language that will provide you with significance of the parameters, number of iterations, convergence, convergence and several other issues related to nonlinear regression. But if you're learning the subject for, for the first time, or if you don't have a, a lot of experience with nonlinear regression, this is a very useful approach for fitting the water retention curve and other nonlinear functions. You can uh, do a little research on the difference between linear and nonlinear regression or, or linear and nonlinear functions. Uh, it's, it's a little bit complicated, a little bit above what, what we could discuss right now, but I discussed that in some of my courses that I teach at the University of Brazil. So what we have here, we have a set of data of water content as a function of the, the absolute value of metric potential. You see this in civil engineering, hydrogeology and particularly in soil science and soil science and irrigation here is the water retention function that we fit right now the van gennuken equation most of you must be familiar with this equation if you're looking on learning how to fit it using excel or using other programs so it was published in 1980 and it's a very useful equation for predicting uh, the, the relationship between water content and metric potential and also can be used to derive parameters for the unsaturated hydraulic conductivity function function you have here two variable variables the water content and the metric potential or the absolute value of the metric potential and you have fitting parameters you have theta r theta s alpha m and n Theta S and theta R could be uh, measured, especially in the case of theta S, and inputted as a number here, or the, as a fixed value. Uh, theta R could also be estimated from the shape of the curve. Uh, alpha could, to some extent, be estimated from the shape of the curve, but M and N are empirical parameters. What we'll do here right now is to fit all of these parameters as empirical parameters. So will fit them there you have a single value for each one of them and they will define the shape of the relationship between theta and h first thing you need to do is to create a plot of the function of theta as a function of the metric potential so let's create a simple scatter plot here insert chart and here is our water retention function. I'm gonna I'm not gonna customize this plot a lot. Uh, I'm just gonna put the axis tiles here, just so you know what we're working with. So this is would be theta in the proper units, and this would be the logarithm of the absolute value of h. So to have the sigmoidal form format of this curve that you usually usually see in the books and the papers you have to put this scale here as log so we'll put the x scale as a logarithm scale and you have the s shape or the sigmoidal shape that you would expect for a water retention curve so now what we need to do is to fit this equation to this data here in, in this plot before working in fitting this equation, we will use a plugin in Excel called Solver. Most of you will not have Solver installed by default in Excel, so you have to install it. But it, it comes, uh, 
you can quickly install it just by going to file options Addings, and here it is solver add-in. So you will add this module for your Microsoft Excel, and you can use it for the. It it, it is usually used for numerical problems. So when you don't have an, an analytical solution to a problem, you can use uh, solver as a search procedure. Uh, uh, iterative iterative search procedure so okay I already have it installed so I don't need to install it again you guys could have to install it and probably in some cases you might have to restart Microsoft Excel but save your work so the first thing we will need to do is to create a predicted water content so for the predicted water content, we will need to guess initial values for the empirical parameters or empirical parameters here, data S, data R, alpha, M, and N. So let's create a little table here with, let's call it von Genuchten parameters. Let's put alpha data S, data, R, M, N, first N, then N. So we don't know this, the value of, of these parameters. We, what we want to do is to fit this equation so we can find out the estimated value of these parameters. But we can get a good initial guess if we look at the shape of this function. So theta s would be around here. It's the point where the function or the, the point where the plot, an imaginary plot that could draw to this point will intercept the y-axis. So let's put 0.5. Theta r is the point here where this function or this imaginary light would tend to as h goes to infinity. So you have an asymptotic behavior here as log h goes to infinity. Theta s, theta r would be the value to which the function tends to an infinity. So let's put here around 0.2. Alpha is the inverse of the error entry value, so it would be something around here at this, around this potential, so it would be 1 over this value here. So let's put 1 over 100. You guys will see that the initial guess is important, but we'll get to the, an estimated value when we fit this function. NMM are empirical parameters, so we'll use values that are usually used in the literature. I'll use 2 for N. And for M, I, I will use the Moalan restriction. What is this, the Moalan restriction? It's one of, it's a restriction that the Van Genuchten used in his paper to simplify the, the procedure to find the, the hydraulic conductivity function. It is one minus one over N. So I'll make the reference here for the cell or n is. It's very important here for us in Excel because uh, the search procedure, the solver, it's very sens sensitive to access to an excess number of parameters or to bad initial guess. So for any nonlinear regression procedure, if you reduce reduce the number of par parameters. It makes the search procedure work better. It makes it easier to find convergence. So it's very useful, especially in Excel, where you don't have a dedicated algorithm for nonlinear regression. So the empirical parameters that we need to fit are alpha, theta s, theta r, r and n, because m was, was fixed as one minus one over n. So now we can create the column with theta p, which would be theta predicted by this function. So let's put equal. We're just going to put this function here in this cell. So first, theta r, which is here. You can put a 
currency sign here to fix this value. So when you drag this down, you do not drag uh, this reference here. You can do that more easily just, just pressing F4 after selecting the cell. So data S, F4 minus data R, F4 divided by one plus parenthesis alpha f4 times age i will not fix age because we need to drag it down to estimate the value as age goes up to the power of n everything to the power of m So if we've done everything correct, here's our predicted data with the initial guess of the value of the empirical parameters. What we will do now is to put those values here inside the graph. So we can, we can look if the fitting, at least visually, look at the, if the fitting, fitting is good enough. So I'm going to go here, select data. I'm going to call this first data set observed and I'm going to add a second set here called predicted x value is h and y values are the predicted data values now so here it is here is, here is our predicted function using the initial guess of the parameters. We're going to change this to a line because now we have an equation. We can, uh, we can use a line instead of points because we have a predictive function. So we can do that. Marker. Let's take the marker and let's use a solid line. Let's put it in a color red. Let's use a dashed line. No, it's not border. It's the line. Solid line, red. Let's put a thinner line, dashed line. So here it is. Here, here is our prediction line. But it's not fitted yet. We have to fit it so we will get the best estimate for our empirical parameters. To fit this equation, we have to minimize some sort of function. Or in, in some of the other case, there's a function to be maximized, but it's easier if we think as a function to be minimized. What we want to minimize is the sum of the squares of some of the squares of the devi deviations or the differences between the observed data points and the line. So how do we do that? We need to create another column here that will be observed minus, minus predicted values squared. So these are the squared differences. Just put it here, equal data observed minus data predicted squared. So now the function that we want to minimize is the sum of squared deviations. What is this? Is the sum of this column here equals sum of all of this. So for, for the best fit, we'll have a line that minimizes this, this square deviations. So we want to minimize these functions and we will minimize this function by varying the, this, set, this set of empirical parameters. Now we're gonna use the, we'll go to data and we will, we will use the solver procedure. Set objective. Objective is your objective cell. In our case is this cell that we want to minimize. What are the changing cells? The parameters, the empirical parameters. You can put constraints. For example, theta R and theta S needs to be greater than or equal than zero. Uh, the range of values for N. We'll not do that. We will not do that here, but you probably would need to do that in real data. If the data is not very good or if you need to uh, 
if, if there's greater chances of the dispersion of the search procedure, you need to put constraints. So that's it. We were minimizing the sums of sum of square of deviation by changing the empirical parameters. Let's ask it to solve. Solver has converged so that we had convergence of the the numerical procedure. Okay, and that's it. We 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 have fitted the van der Noten water water retention equation to our data. You can see that we have minimized the sum of square of the devi deviation, and the line, the predicted line, goes very smoothly through throughout the points of our data. If we mess with these values here, you'll see that the function would change. Each one of them has a, a meaning. So they have a, a either physical significance in case of in the case of theta s theta r and alpha or more or less empirical meaning in the case of n and n. So let's go back here. You can have an idea of the quality of this fit by defining um, an R square between predicted and observed values. So we can do that by just creating a plot, creating a plot here. Scatter plot here and feeding a best fit line using adding a trend line here, so we have 098.77, or you can just type here, let's put here r squared equals r -S -Q, r -S -Q, which is the function that calculates the r square between the observed and the predicted. 0.9 the R square, uh, you have to be careful with, with the R squared because it's not a very minimum, minimum very meaningful uh, statistic in nonlinear regression. The ideally, ideally, what you need are is the convergence, the significance of the parameters, and other uh, outputs from a nonlinear uh, regression algorithm. But if you just need to understand how the procedure works, or if you just need a quick and dirty fit for the water retention curve, that should be it. So here you have the fitted value of your param parameters and you can use that in further applications.